Hey, welcome back to another video. So I have been using Cursor 2.0 instead of Cloud Code for the past 10, 12 days on client projects. And I have to say that I'm loving it so far. Now I have always had a soft spot for Cursor since I built my entire agency on top of it, you know, back in September 2024. But I was switching to Cloud Code for a few months because it performed way better. This new Cursor update feels like a complete game changer. So for the last client projects, I have stuck fully to Cursor 2.0 and the results have been amazing. So today I'll walk you through what I have learned using it and how you can apply the same workflows to maximize your output and ship faster. So let's get straight into the video. Okay, so when you get into Cursor, the first thing that you will be able to see is this new updated UI. So you still have the older UI here where you can see the files, the auto terminal, and if you click on command L, you will be able to access the agent. But this agent's interface is the newer edition from Cursor's side, and it is not just any UI update. So it is their way of moving towards a code-free development because now they want people to focus only on the agents while not really caring about what code is being written and that is why they have made it focused entirely on agents so you will be able to see that you prompt here and here is the terminal here is the place by which you can create a new agent but still as we are not very close to a code free development environment that is why we still have the older interface where you can still go through the files that you have review them manually and you can add the lines manually etc but yes i really think that this is a step from cursor to move towards a code free development and in the upcoming months or years i really think that a time would come when we would be able to code without even looking at the files that are being written behind the scenes. So as you can see, it's more focused and designed from the ground up to be centered around agents rather than files. So you can focus on the outcomes you want while agents take care of the details. But when you need to deep dive into the code, you can still easily open files in the new layout or switch back to the classic IDE. So totally up to you. But this is something that I just wanted to start with so that you guys know that why exactly is this UI change inside Cursor 2.0. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to mention is the Composer model that Cursor came up with. So it's been around two weeks since, you know, Cursor 2.0 launched. So you guys already know about it, but I just wanted to talk about that, how cool it is. So it's not as good as GPT-5 Codex or Sonnet 4.5, I would say, but it makes up for that in speed. So now if you're not working on a very complicated project and you are just letting, you know, you are just doing, let's say, vibe coding, or you are implementing some simple features, that time speed matters a lot and extra speed is always fun. And that is why I have been experimenting with Composer 1 a lot and I really like it for like I said implementing simple features and I even used it you know mindfully on some of my client projects results were great but like I said it is not as good as Sonnet 4.5 or GPT-5 Codex but if you are looking for speed and you know that a particular project is not very important or if you are even working on a hobby project feel free to go ahead with Composer 1 it really gives you you know that happiness of vibe coding and it really makes stuff work really really fast inside agents so as you might might all know already that we can have multi models, you know. So I tried comparing comp uh, Sonnet 4.5, GPT-5 and uh, Composer 1 and Composer 1 was way too fast as compared both of the models. So Composer 1 had already started writing code while both of the other models were, were you know, just uh, planning their to-do list and going through the code base. So yes, Composer 1 is quite fast and I would highly recommend it if you are working on a hobby project. And as it is a model from Cursor, it's trained on a lot of production ready code. So in the future, I'm pretty sure that they are going to make it very, very smarter. And that time is coming up really soon. So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to mention is, like I said, the multi models option inside Cursor. So I learned it from Alex Finn and then tried it out myself. And I really, really loved it. So basically, when you are creating a front end inside Cursor or any other AI agent, then you would see that it always goes ahead with that purplish gradient which does not re look really nice and it always looks generic and that is why if you use multiple models then at the same time you can run the same prompt through let's say four different models or same model but four different times at the same time and you can literally have four different outputs and at the end you can just choose one out of them and push that into our main code base so I know this might be expensive, but if you are working on the front end, I highly, highly recommend it because front end is something that a lot of people, you know, are not able to take care of properly. Uh, and that is why I highly recommend it. So as you will be able to see, this is a pro that I wrote. So build a clean, minimal mood tracker web app using Next.js and Tailwind V3 with the white and red color palette. And then I explained what functionality do I want. And also I asked it to use the 
local storage for now because I don't want to over complicate it. And after that, you will be able to select a model from here, right? So let me click on new agent and let me show you how exactly it looks like. So I'll just take this prompt from here. I have already ran this once, but just wanted to show you guys how to do it. Command V and here you will be able to see that we have the cycle agent count. Now you can either run it two times, three times, four times, so it will depend on how much you want to experiment with. I know this will be expensive, like I said, but uh, totally worth it. Or you can use multiple models. So let's say one cycle would be of Composer 1, one would be of Sonnet 4.5 and the other one would be of GPT-5. But what I did was I used Sonnet 4.5 only because like I said, it's still the most effective model according to me. And then I let it run. And to keep things simple, I just had a cycle of two times and you will be able to see that I got two different code bases at the end of it. So let me show you how the output looks like. So one is running on localhost 3000. So as you can see, this is mood flow and we are able to, you know, come on here, we can even select our mood, you know, of how we are feeling that day. You can also journal your mood on that particular day. So let's say I feel great today. Have been coding with and loving it. So when you click on save today's entry, it's saved. And if you go to calendar, let's see if it is working. Oh, see, you will be able to see the entry from that particular day. And now you have the entire calendar. So the entire idea about, you know, the entire idea behind this web application was so you can come onto it every day you can journal your mood as well as select an emoji for your mood and then at the end of the month or two months later you will be able to see and click on that particular day and see you know how your mood was on that particular day so pretty simple concept i built this back in september 2024 when i had just started you know exploring the world of courser and this time i was able to build something similar with just a single prompt back then it took me like a week so crazy times surely so you can go to back to the dashboard you can log out you can log in right now obviously we are not connected with the back end but get started and this is it okay so this is ui number one which was created by Sonic 4.5 so let us go to the second one okay so this is ui number two looks pretty great i mean as you can see the calendar is here you can go ahead and select the mood so pretty much the same but as you can see both of them did their own job and you can expect different outputs with every cycle and at the end you can select the best one and if i click on save entry it is saying entry saved this time we had the javascript object come up and you can see that we had the entry for today so like i said feel free to experiment with the multiple models when you are building the ui it's fine to spend a little extra in the beginning when it comes to the back end you don't need to do this because i think so on 4.5 is smart enough and it is able to take care of everything on the back end and at the end let's say i like the version one better i can click on review and i can just click on apply all and then everything will be applied to my code base and if i go into the editor you will be able to see everything has been pushed into my code base one thing that i forgot to mention is whenever you want to use multiple models you first have to set up github repository so it's quite simple you know just go to github create a repository and then you can copy the link from there and ask course to connect your project to github repository and it will take care of that in just a single prompt don't have to over complicate it you don't have to learn github in 2025 i mean if you don't want to if you want to then totally go ahead with it it is going to be really helpful in the future but for simple stuff just prompt cursor and that is it okay so the next thing that i want to talk about which is a game changer when it comes to you know debugging your application or refining it is the inbuilt browser lovable already had it windsurf also had it but now finally cursor also has an internal browser tab so if you basically click on this and then you click on browser tab the application will open inside your ide itself and if you click on this select elements button you can, you know, select any element and that would be sent to Cursor and Cursor would have entire context of which button are you talking about, what input you are currently selecting, etc. So let's say this button is red right now and I want to turn it into blue. So I can just click on it and before I had to explain it in depth, you know, so this is the today's button at the top where which I want to update. But now I can just select it using the select element tool. You know, I can just ask it to update the color. And if I enter, then Cursor will know exactly what element I am talking about and it will go ahead and update its color. Another cool thing which would be a game changer for you is we now also have access to the dev tools straight inside Cursor. So it's really great. So now debugging applications is even faster and a lot easier. So yes, I mean, inbuilt browser is a great feature and some of the use cases for it could be, you know, updating the UI. So let's say you don't like the font of this particular text, you can select it and ask Cursor to update it. If some particular button is not working in a certain way, you can select it and then ask Cursor to, you know, find exactly what the issue with it is. 
etc and we also have the dev tools so you can just go inside the network if you have if you are making any api calls and want to debug them you can also go into side console and look for all of the console logs etc so pretty great feature highly highly recommended and has been a game changer while working on client project okay so the next feature that i want to talk about is code reviews so basically cursor now has code its reviews of itself so if you go here and you click on slash and you write agent then you will be able to click on agent review and it will just go ahead and review all of the code that you just pushed so as you can see it is undergoing review right now and what it will do is it will you know review our code for security issues bugs uh, smells etc and let you know what all issues there are with your code base now if you want to do a simple review then this feature totally works and highly recommended but if you want to go an extra step and you want to make sure that your SaaS is launch ready then i highly recommend code rabbit so first you can do the fix with ai with code rabbit and then later on you can review your pr that is much more detailed and much more better and that would make sure that your product really is launch ready before you launch it so yes if you want to do simple reviews stick with this slash agent review command inside cursor else go ahead with code rabbit we always use code rabbit for review because when it comes to client projects we may have to make sure that the quality is really really high and that is why we use code rabbit but if i am working on a hobby project then even this is fine but yeah make sure one way or the other you review your code base because the biggest problem with vibe coding is like everyone knows security and you have to make sure that your code is properly reviewed before you launch it into the public okay so the next feature that i wanted to talk about is cloud agents i am still experimenting with this and have not been using it a lot but it really feels like a game changer and in the future the possibilities are just endless so basically you now have a web app as well as a mobile app for making changes to your code base so cloud agents make it easy to run many agents at once without requiring your laptop to stay connected to the internet so if you click on this link you will be able to get to here and from here you can select a repository so let's say i'm currently working on mood flow and i have the mood flow repository ready so if i click on select repository i'll be able to select that particular repository and then i can start using this from even my phone so let's say you are at the gym right now or at the library and something just came up so let's say you want to do some marketing research or you want to review your code or let's say you want to add a simple feature you can open this website onto your mobile phone you can also save it as a pwa onto your home screen and then you can just ask it and it will take care of that you don't have to access your laptop you don't have to be near it when you do that and as this is being done on the cloud then later on when you open your laptop you can just you know take that code and merge it into your code base so pretty cool feature i would say i haven't used it a lot but as you can see these are the ways by which you can use it so fixing bugs it's now often faster to kick off a cloud agent from slack or cursor than it is to add an issue to a track like a linear you can use it for fixing bugs quick to do's assisting with complex features so yeah pretty cool feature highly highly recommended and as you can see this small image a lot of people don't know about this but basically you can like i said save it to your home screen so this web app is also a pwa so you can start using it straight from your mobile phone so pretty cool so yes guys pretty much it i hope you like the video so i am always a bit late when it comes to you know sharing the updates with you guys because i am really busy with the agency as well as the community and i only share stuff when i have really experimented with it in depth and i have used it on client projects and if something is really helpful only then i share it with you guys so yes i hope you like the video i am still diving deep into cursor 2.0 and will be releasing a few more videos as i find more things so stay tuned for that and if you have any questions feel free to comment below and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video